Well, hello again, everybody. This is Norm. And I'd like to kind of finish up this little mini-series I'm doing on the early days of the construction of this current layout. Around late October of 2015, as the front main section of the layout was uh, fairly presentable, I started to move into the uh, roundhouse extension. So if you recall in the first video I had mentioned during the dismantling of the dog bone experiment, I simply took the uh, roundhouse and turntable uh, peninsula extension and kind of slid that off into the far southwest corner of the layout room. This little chicken scratch drawing shows me trying to uh, figure out the final resting location for the 4x8 module. I had to make like a little 12 inch extension to push it off the uh, probably the western wall there just to give me uh, clearance for the backdrop curvature. Although this is the modern track plan as I didn't have that car shop at the front of the layout when I first built the roundhouse area. This kind of shows you how I spliced in the approach trackage to the uh, turntable and roundhouse into the rest of the layout. So this track gives me access to the car shop now and also into the yard without interfering with the rest of the layout's operation. Not only is it a good place to introduce trains to the layout, but it's also a uh, sort of a fake interchange and it's also a full runaround track. So here's a little flyby on that combo track coming out of the tunnel, showing you the uh, full set of crossovers and, and the access to the car shop. And you can see a uh, train running on the main. And uh, here's the approach coming into the uh, turntable and roundhouse area. So here's some progress shots of the uh, Millhouse River turntable construction so I was able to finally get to work on it uh, around November 2015 now I'm painting the pit rails assembling the bridge here and part of his bridge is uh, already assembled for you so that's pretty nice it's just a matter of getting the details on it painting it and weathering it so I'm getting it integrated into the uh, layout now and you can see I like to paint my bench work flat black here's some more shots Got it weathered up, and um, I think he painted that pit for you already, some kind of concrete color, and it was just a matter of doing some final weathering on it. Here I am testing it out with a Legacy K4, and uh, got it running at this point, early November 2015. So before I could lay out my inbound and outbound service tracks, I really needed to uh, get my coaling tower situated. This is a Grand Trunk 350-ton Ogle coaling tower still standing today in Grand Haven, Michigan. Years ago, I built a really rough model based on this one and its sister still standing in Duran, Michigan. So at the time I built it, I just sort of winged it and uh, built it from photographs I took of the one in Duran. And as you can imagine, it was pretty far off dimensionally. I really liked the design and wanted to rebuild it to scale dimensions and I uh, thought it would fit in well on my layout. So I decided to recycle as much as I could from it. So, so here's a couple shots of me demolishing it. A pal had mentioned that there were scale drawings of these towers in a book called Evening Before the Diesel by Charles Foss. So I went and bought a copy of the book and used the drawings to uh, rebuild this tower to more scale dimensions. As you can see, I built the tower in sections and uh, right now I'm doing the uh, base here, rebuilding that to uh, correct dimensions. So not only could I correct dimensional inaccuracies, but I could add some more proper details. This slot here is for the belt going from the machine house into the uh, hoist assembly. I was able to correct some of the inaccuracies on the back side of the tower too. So this little opening is at the bottom of the hoist uh, assembly. There's also a sand drying room with two windows on the back side of the, of the uh, structure, but I did not put them in because it would face the back of the layout and it would never be seen. Here I am rebuilding the main part of the structure, so I was able to redimension it to uh, more closely match the drawings. A neat feature of old concrete structures is the uh, mold lines from the molds that they built board by board during construction. I did this with a piece of uh, notched styrene and um, just kind of ran it across spackle. You know, I slathered up the whole structure with spackle and then was able to do the mold lines. 
Here's the uh, top machinery house going on. I did that out of foam core. I, I was able to recycle a roof and I was also able to set the windows in correctly. Here's the backside. One thing to note that this isn't fully scale dimensioned. It's about four feet too narrow, I think, because um, when I originally built the legs, it was to fill, um, it was to fit a different spot on the layout and it fit track spacing I had at the time. So I kind of kept the slightly narrow width. Here it is during the painting, Krylon khaki again. I decided to build a little machinery house since I had the opportunity and I thought it was a nice touch to have it by there. So here it is going together. So this little hoist house is made out of uh, foam core on a little 1 8 masonite base. The roof is a piece of quarter inch masonite that I shaped to get that radius on, um, on a uh, belt sander. Uh, curiously, the one in Durand is gone, but the one in De uh, Grand Haven is still there. So here it is kind of going through the first uh, wash session. And um, I also decided to kind of whitewash the bottom... Uh, what, six feet of the tower. I thought it was a nice touch. I don't think Grand Trunk did it, but I know Penzi did that in some of their towers. And since this is going on a Penzi layout, I thought it was a nice touch. Here's some of the ladders going on. And I tried to get them as close as I could to the Foss drawings, just using styrene. And uh, I didn't do a full ladder job on the one end because I couldn't get some of the stairs to land right. So I just kind of kind of freestyle that one ladder on that uh, far corner there. And I'm getting ready to start doing the shoots. Um, the prototype had three shoots, two in the front, one in the back. They never had any in the uh, center. The, the center was just a hopper track for delivering coal. And just here's some more uh, workings with styrene. I've gotten a little bit better over the years with working with, uh, with plastic. Um, here I am doing the shoots. It took a few iterations to get the shoots right. But once I came up with one, I was able to make a two other copies and I was surprised these catwalks are actually really narrow uh, in real life so I don't think I made them too narrow and uh, those cables are actually like jeweler string so that they're, they're kind of flexy but I did kind of glue those shoots they don't actually operate they're just kind of ornamental more than anything and I, I did go back and there was a couple iterations of getting those shoots uh, correct Here's the stairs to the upper uh, machinery house. The FOSS drawings showed the sanding hardware, which was really cool. So I was able to try to model the sanding hardware to the best of my ability. So there is a pipe that goes from the drying room up to what I assume is a sand uh, storage hopper. And then I also model the sand delivery pipes on both sides of the tower. Now that the tower is mostly done, I was able to use it as a uh, template to start laying out the inbound and outbound service tracks. So this takes us to the end of uh, December 2015, and now I'm starting to play around with locating the uh, service tracks. Um, I got this nice ash hoist from Crescent Locomotive Works at the time and repainted it a little bit, but kind of almost used it as is. It showed up almost completely assembled, and... Uh, that was pretty nice. So here's another overview of the tracks, uh, inbound and outbound, and uh, just getting them all set up. It was critical to get the coaling tower and the ash hoist set up, uh, along with the approach tracks of the turntable, before I could really continue on with any more scenery. So in the background, you can kind of see the, uh, the bluffs just kind of stopping there. And uh, once I got these major structures in place I could continue on. Here's a quick shot of the coal delivery hopper for the coaling tower. I wanted to use Caboose Industries hand throws for all my switches in the yard. Um, so this is me trying to figure out how to do it. And it wasn't too difficult. Just drilled a hole in the throw bar and cut up some Atlas ties. And then I was able to, uh, you know, CA them in place. And then uh, just run a couple of number two screws down through the ground throw and they've been pretty reliable um in fact uh i use them here and uh, over by the car shop too and by the way all the switches in the yard are atlas number fives uh, because you know it's kind of a stomping ground for big steam these next few photos show the uh shaping and the uh, installation of the background bluffs 
So you can see, I kind of trace out some of the shapes on the backdrop and then um, shape these bluffs. I, I ended up building them in the shop a little bit and brought, brought them back out to uh, fit them up and test the shape. And uh, you can see the process I'm going through here, just, just playing around with the shape. And like I said, I was able to build them in, in sections. So it was kind of nice. I could limit the mess to the uh, workshop and then I'm bring them out and do some fine adjusting. But um, with the structures in place, it would really help to kind of visualize what the background was going to look like. And then here's a shot of, of working on one of the bluff sections in the shop. And then uh, here's some rocks. Uh, on this section, I used some of the uh, foam rocks that Scenic Express offers, you know, and kind of painted them the same way I, I did the plaster ones with Krylon khaki as a base. And you can see I'm painting the foam again flat black, just like the rest of the deck and all that stuff. And uh, here's a look back at it. You can see the integrated uh, retaining wall I did did in there and um, I built these poles uh, like these high voltage utility poles to kind of traipse through the scenery. I was going to use those Rail King um, power poles but I never really could uh, get them to work out. I have this nice little laser kit of this Penzi tool house so I, I found a nice little spot for it. Um, I had tried it at some other locations on the layout but this ended up being uh, I think the, the best spot for it. And uh, here's another overview looking back. So I'm doing all my ground cover now. And then this is looking from the main part of the layout into the, uh, into the uh, yard approach. So I just about used up my five gallon bucket of Adirondack blend. And there's the tool house sitting in the scenery. I always get asked what I use for ballast and here it is, the secret weapon, uh, Woodland Scenics Fine Cinders. Um, this is just my favorite stuff to use. Uh, most of the time I'll fill the, uh, the track um, with uh, sifted play sand or whatever just to uh, take up some volume and then the final layer will be this stuff. So kind of heading into March of uh, 2016, you know, we got most of the ground cover going down and uh, the backdrop is coming together and uh, starting to plant some trees and things are starting to take shape. So here's a few views of, of the progress at the time. And then now I was getting ready to do the final part of this uh, last section of the layout at the time, and that was the uh, actual roundhouse. You can see here I have another section of bluffs going in back there. It's already shaped. It's just uh, getting ready to uh, get planted. So I was trying to figure out the shape of that and determine where the roundhouse was going to land. So these photos here show kind of those two efforts converging, got the final location of the roundhouse, and then you can kind of see the bluffs are going to make their way into the, uh, into that corner to kind of envelope everything. And these photos are just, you know, me taking uh, measurements. So the uh, roundhouse construction kind of started and, uh, cutting uh, expansion lines in the concrete deck. And again, Krylon Khaki, again, my favorite uh, color for concrete. And uh, just testing the rails. Um, I think those were Atlas 40 inch sections, just uh, stripped of their ties. So you can see I wasn't really going any further with the backdrop until I got that um, roundhouse nailed down. And now I'm starting to do it. Now I was happy with where the roundhouse was gonna land and, and you can see how I spliced that all in and uh, kind of got it to follow the uh, backdrop. And again, more of the uh, pre-made foam rocks and uh, just more of the same uh, type of techniques I used uh, all over the rest of the layout. In this view, you're looking over kind of where the chill out area is now and that section back there is basically the four by eight island that I had slid into that corner. So that's what it looks like as the roundhouse is going in. And here's the end of my five gallon bucket of uh, Scenic Express Adirondack blend. Um, these guys are super cool. You should buy all your scenic supplies from them. They're super nice. So here's just a few shots of some engines I was uh, running at the time, just hanging out in the uh, service area. Just, uh, I was just excited to have this kind of put together to this point where it looked pretty presentable. So after using the roundhouse base to kind of determine its location, I got all the scenery done around the roundhouse on the uh, 
on the extension and then got back into the shop probably around mid-March 2016 to uh, get cracking on the uh, actual roundhouse structure itself. This is an Altoona Model Works kit with a uh, set of extensions put on the front of the roundhouse. And uh, my only regret with it is that I didn't order at least like a six stall or something, but I kind of ordered this size to fit on the four foot wide extension. In any case, um, here's some of the construction process in the shop over the next few weeks in March of 2016. Um, the one thing, uh, I would order a new one if he ever did a uh, Pennsylvania Railroad version. Um, I, I believe this one's based on a Union Pacific prototype. It's still really nice and attractive. It's, it's really the highlight of my layout, I think. And um, if I had another regret is that I didn't really weather it enough. I ordered his lighting kit with it, and here you see it uh, getting installed. I used some brass rod as bus bar for the uh, power wiring. His kits go together really well. They are a lot of work, but his uh, castings and, and all of the uh, laser cut components and the MDF base, everything is really precisely manufactured. Here you can see some of the templates he sends along for the uh, assemblies. And these next few photos are just, just more of the uh, construction going on. And I can't remember how long this took, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, I think it's it's a real showpiece for the layout. I actually left the windows kind of press fit, so they are removable. That's how I'm able to film videos. And uh, being O-scale, you know, I can stick my iPhone in there and uh, get some nice dramatic shots from inside the roundhouse. So here's the roof sections going on, too. And... Um, Here's some rolled roofing I did. I, I use this uh, paper uh, bandage tape or whatever to do the rolled roofing. And I could not help but take the thing out to the layout on occasion and, and kind of test fit it. So here's some of the initial shots of it just being tested on the layout. And here's the roof uh, going together. I made all the roof sections removable. Here's a lighting test. And... Uh, just just a couple more shots of the lighting and uh, that, that was really worth the extra few bucks getting that and here's the doors going on like I said I think the Pennsylvania style roundhouses I've seen photos of they're not as photogenic as this Union Pacific prototype so I don't know but still I'm, I'm really happy with it but if you did ever decide to make an actual Penzi prototype I'd probably go for it and here's a construction kind of winding down. I'm getting the final assemblies put on and and uh, got all the doors fitted and, and tested out. And uh, here it is going on to the layout, bringing it over. And uh, this is the final installation of it. And it's still there to this day. And I've had no problems with those doors or nothing. So here's another couple shots, and you can see how the how the bluff scenery kind of envelopes it, I guess. And I think since then I've added a lot more trees to that bluff, and of course I've repainted that backdrop a couple times. Here's the interior shortly after installation on the layout, and uh, after it got fully operational. This was probably like around late April 2016, so more than five years ago now, and... Uh, this is pretty much as it uh, looks today. So I think this will wrap up this little uh, mini three-part series of the early days of construction of this current layout of mine. Uh, I hope this answered a lot of questions for you, and I, I hope you found it uh, interesting and informative. I'm sure I probably missed a bunch of stuff and glossed over details, but uh, I try to do the best I, I, I could from memory. You know, I'm sure I forgot a lot of stuff, too, during the adventures on this layout anyway i'd like to thank you for uh, watching and uh, thank you for your patience and uh, also the kind words and the questions i get in the comments and uh, feel free to ask more questions and uh, let me know what else you think i should cover i uh, hope to do more videos like this in the future and uh, we'll uh, see you soon bye bye